and shakers in geek culture. Hey, this is Todd McFarlane, creator of Spawn, and one of the original founders of Image Comics. I'm Zach Whedon. This is Mark Zickby, writer, producer, and director of Space Command. Hi, this is George Ascenti. I'm Ralph Bakshi. Hi, I'm Chris Hardwick. People who get it, get it. God bless the geek. They're listening. You're consuming. You're watching it with your ears. Oh, just listen. The Geek Speak Show is powered by Collider.com, GeekTyrant.com, Ramascreen.com, and Mightyville.com. Get ready to speak geek on The Geek Speak Show. Here's your host, Henry. Here I am. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Geek Speak Show. So we are all recovering from Halloween, my favorite time of year. We all got a little bit of a stomach ache because we all went out uh, and... Got some candy, of course, and ate a little bit too much. Joel ate most of it, but so did we, and now we're suffering from the after effects of hurricane candy. Uh, speaking of hurricanes, they call them the Superstorm, but it was a hurricane. Hurricane Superstorm Sandy hit the New York, the East Coast area. Uh, Rachel's over there. She's fine. Her house is fine. It, well, it's standing at least, but she may, may not be on the show. Probably not. I'm going to lean more towards she's probably not going to be on the show. We're going to try. She has intermittent She has intermittent internet. Say that fast five times. Because um, as you, you all know what happened down there. Uh, power is out. Some people still don't have power. Some sort of do. She her, her, her internet is you know going in and out. Connection is not stable, in other words. So, she may come on, she may not be able to come on. Um, because of that, as you may have heard, there was a little announcement made by Disney and Lucasfilm literally hours before we all went out trick-or-treating. Talk about a treat, huh? You all know what it is by now. Um, Rachel, of course, sent me, she blew up my phone, almost literally, blew up my phone with text. Oh my God, did you hear it? Did you hear the news? Confirmed it. Yes, it's true. The rumors are true. The Spider-Man black costumes. No, no. Disney bought Lucasfilm or acquired Lucasfilm, and we'll definitely talk about that later in the show. How can we not? Um, we'll hear, as a matter of fact, from Walt Disney Company CEO Bob Iger and from a guy that created Star Wars. Uh, forget his name, but we'll hear from him, too, in just a little bit. Uh, but but uh, next week, we're going to do a huge, huge Star Wars show. Um, we're going to let the shoe drop, not in the bad way, but, you know... The, the announcement, first of all, took us all by shock. I was going to say by surprise, but really by shock. First, Because it was a, a double whammy. It really was. First, Disney acquires Lucasfilm. That's a WTF in capitals. But the next announcement, that floored me and everybody, I'm sure. We have Episode 7 coming in 2015. Episode 7. Not prequels, not a reboot. Episode 7, a direct sequel to Return of the Jedi. And George, George Lucas, he said 7, 8, and 9 are coming also. And maybe some some other stories from uh, Star Wars also, from other characters. But Episode 7, whatever it's going to be called, 2015. I think it's a little bit rushed because, you know, if you remember back in when Episode 1 was announced, it was in 93, 94 around there, and we didn't get Episode 1 till 99. So that was... You know, you know how great I am at math. Five, six years in production till it finally came out. So, I don't know, but it's in good hands. You know, with Disney, it's in good hands. Those, I'll, all I'll say right now is this: those of you who, and I've seen the tweets, I've seen the, uh, the e- I've, I got some emails here at Henry at show dot com. As a matter of fact, send me an email to Henry at show dot com. I'd be interested in knowing what you guys think. I got some on the Facebook, but you know, let's have a conversation. Well email conversation and let me know what you think what you expect especially from uh, from Star Wars moving forward first of all I gotta say I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say my piece right now uh, by the way Joel Jay they're here sort of but you know we're doing they're doing something I'll let you know what that is because it's going to affect you guys also not in, see all of this stuff not in no, no bad news here so it's gonna affect you in a good way I'll let you know what's going on in just a second but going back to Star Wars um, I'll say my piece right now um, I'm very, very excited, again, about Star Wars. No secret, ever since we started this show way back in 2010, whenever it was, I said, you know, when the, when the, when the credits rolled up on episode three, that was it. Star Wars was done for me. 
Uh, Clone Wars is not Star Wars for me. Uh, the EU has been there and ha- it is still there, but that's really not Star Wars because none of it is really considered canon. Um, the Thrawn trilogy is considered by most real fans the best, quote unquote, sequels to Return of the Jedi. Um, and you also have Vector Prime, the New Jedi Order stories. Those were pretty good also, but none of those are considered canon. We're about to get in 2015 the real thing. Since episode one was announced, because honestly, I wasn't even that excited when the special editions were announced. But when episode one was announced, I was very excited, just like everybody else. This announcement has refueled my fire, uh, uh, my love for Star Wars, I should say. Now, I've, I've mentioned before, I was four years old when I saw Star Wars. It wasn't even a new hope, but I saw Star Wars in the theater, the Coronet Theater here in San Francisco, which is long gone. Moment of silence. Too bad it's not going to be here for episode seven to continue the tradition, but... We'll make do. We'll create new traditions. But I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited about Star Wars again. Now, the other side, and I expected that, and I think all of you who are real fans kind of expected this anyway, too. The haters, I'll call them that, are out tweeting, are out, you know, hating. In other words, there was a meme out there with, you know, with Darth Vader saying, hey, nothing, thanks, Disney. Nothing says Evil Empire like Disney. Really? Evil Empire. How many people has Disney killed? No, I mean literally killed, ended their life. If you can prove that, okay, maybe you got a case for calling them evil. But, you know, don't call somebody evil until you actually know what defines evil. That was a guy that walked this earth a few years ago, Adolf Hitler. That is evil incarnate. That person deserves to be called evil. A company? Not really. They haven't done anything except given us entertainment. Some good, some bad, but hey, you you know you know the saying: you can't please them all. Like this show, not every show pleases every listener out there. I know that we all know that. Anybody who's in the entertainment industry, we know that. But we keep you know we give it the old college try, and if we fail, go back and try it again. So here's what I'm, I'll, I'll say: my piece right now, and that is, you know, I'm not part of that. I'm not saying oh Disney's gonna mess it all up. Cause go back a little bit. Also, remember when Disney purchased another one of my childhood favorites? Marvel Comics. Yeah, Star Wars made me and my generation pretty much what we I am from the Star Wars generation. But I also, I wasn't just Star Wars. And I'm, I'm not just about Star Wars. I also grew up with Spidey, with Marvel Comics, Fantastic Four, X-Men, everything that Marvel Comics did and stand for. Excelsior. <laughs> I grew up with that. When Disney bought it, I was a little worried that they were going to mess it up. and Not the company, but they were going to mess up the stories and try to quote unquote Disneyfy them. Well, let's fast forward to 2012, 1.5 billion has me and everyone else saying, thanks Disney for buying Marvel and giving us the Avengers, right? So because of that, I am not worried at all what they're going to do with Star Wars. As a matter of fact, that's part of the reason why my fire is relit again. It's, it's got the, the crystal went back in my lightsaber. It's got a fresh crystal. I'm ready to be a fan of the Sith, again. Sorry, Rachel, I've said it before, but uh, but and again, honestly, and, and again, I, I don't want to get too into detail with this because we'll have a huge Star Wars show next week when Rachel is here, is able to be here, and we'll have some Star Wars guests on also at that time. Um, I hope that the villain is not a Sith. You know, we've seen that in the prequels, in the original series. Let's get somebody new. And I'm not saying like the Yu Zong Vong or somebody that's from from the EU. That that you know be, be original, a little bit original. But, but even though it's still going to be on Luke Skywalker, and see there I go, already getting into detail. So I'll stop right there. Just to, again, suffice to say, I'm very excited about the announcement, as I'm sure all of you are. Most of you listening to the show are not part of that. Oh, I hate Disney. I hate all that. I hate Star Wars. You're not part of that. And if you are, you already tuned away a long time ago. I'm very excited. You are all very excited. Rachel's even more excited than she used to be about Star Wars now. So. Next, it's going to be fun, a, a, a fun three years waiting for episode seven, a, a, a few months waiting for Star Trek, because as you know, I love both equally, Star Trek and Star Wars. Great time to be a geek. That's why you're here on the Geek Speak show. So there's Star Wars. Like I said, we're, we're going to do a big Star Wars show next week when Rachel is able to be with us without dropping off or worrying about electricity or anything. So we'll save all that stuff for then. We're going to hear from uh, in, a, in just a little bit because there's no way we can't not talk some more Star Wars because of the announcement. 
capital T, capital A. So we're going to hear from Walt Disney Company CEO Bob Iger and also from George Lucas about why they sold it and why to Disney. So we'll do that in just a few minutes before we do that. Let me take care of what we do every week, and that's starting off with the tube. Well, do flat screens really have tubes anymore? I guess we can't really call TVs the boob tube anymore, huh? Because they don't. Not most of them don't have tubes. So here's what was on TV last week. Uh, Halloween fell on a Wednesday, so The Neighbors wasn't on there. The, the usual comedies, Modern Family and all of those, they weren't on because they had to make room for The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and all the other Halloween specials. So that wasn't on. However, Friday, everybody was on their normal schedule. NBC Grimm was on. And, of course, I watched it live because I promised J.H. Wyman that I would not and I have been. Fringe was on Fox. Finally, that the, uh, what do you call that? The World Series is finally over after, what, 23 games in San Francisco being destroyed? That's really how you celebrate a win? But anyway, I, di- I digress. Um, I got to say something um, not bad, I don't think, about Fringe. Um, it's just an observation, no pun intended there, for you fans of the show know what I'm talking about. But the few last few episodes since the premiere, they've been kind of slow to me. You know, nothing's nothing's really happening. You know, the, the, Walter has a plan to destroy the observers. We don't know what it is yet. They're stuck in amber, literally, and on videotapes, and it's starting to be you know too much of a search search for the MacGuffin, the videotapes. It, you know, they find a videotape and you have to go here. And then you, you, that leads to another. It's kind of it's kind of like Lost now, actually, where one thing leads to another, to another, to another question. And then a whole other set of questions. I hope it doesn't get to that because you don't have that many episodes left to do. It's, it's been kind of slow. The big event, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But again, if you're listening to the show, you've seen the show already. So, you know, the big event so far has been Edda being killed. And at the end of last week's episode, Peter apparently has observer powers because he put that thing in the back of his neck that matrix looking thing and i guess now he has observer powers we'll see what happens this friday uh, hopefully the action ramps up we want to see some victories for the for the fringe crew as we get closer um the teaser was a little scary because it looks like some of them may not make it out of now that they've killed off Edda. i guess anybody re- and it's the final season anybody really can go um like for example a few weeks ago Tell me you weren't scared when Walter was getting tortured by that observer. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have to say about Fringe is that hopefully it's going to speed up some more. Um, I J H Wyman off fair we talked a little bit, so you know I have some faith. He didn't give me everything, no details, but it's he's he just said that I he he knows that I'm a real fan and he knows and he said I'm going to be happy with it. So I'll trust in him. And we'll see what happens. NBC's Grimm, I watched it right after because, like I said, I DVR both shows and I always watch Fringe live and then watch Grimm right after. They have two episodes left in the season. Pretty good. As I've, I keep saying every week, um, it could turn into a Monster of the Week show. It hasn't. The storyline storylines are great. The characters are great. Monroe, I mean, hello, he makes the show. But you care about all the characters. You care about what happens. They have two episodes left. You can't wait to see, if you're a real Grimm fan, what's going to happen with Captain Renard and Nick and Juliet, of course. So two episodes left. We'll see what happens with that. Revolution, eh, kind of slow still. Um, that, I think Joel said it a couple weeks ago or last week. Nothing really happens on that show, and uh, I'm kind of starting to see his point a little. Nothing, nothing, not, the, this past episode the, it didn't really advance the story or didn't do anything. It told a little bit more about some side characters, but that's about it. Um, 666 Park Avenue, that one I like. It's starting to get a little bit slow, and not a complaint. It's just, you no, know, Terry O'Quinn is a phenomenal actor. That's why I'm there, because Terry O'Quinn is there. But it's starting to be too much The Man in Black in this one. Where, you know, this this is a supernatural thriller, mystery kind of show. Every time something mysterious or supernatural happens, the camera goes to Terry O'Quinn, and he's got that look that he had when he was the man in black and, and lost. So, there's, there's a little twist that they introduced at the end of last episode, so maybe they're going to change the, his character around a little bit, hopefully, because right now it rings too much man in black from Lost. Um, and I think that's it for shows. What, what else was on? Uh... I think nothing else was on. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Holy crap balls. That is an episode. This is why AMC's The Walking Dead is the number one show on cable. 
this show, I know I've, there have been a lot of episodes where I call, oh, this is one of the best episodes ever. I got to say, to date, this is the best episode in the series, not just the season so far. Most I tweeted it on Sunday night when I was watching it. One of the most powerful episodes ever, ever, emotionally powerful, punches you right in the gut, right in the stomach. Spoiler alerts if you haven't seen it again, but again, if you're listening to the show, that's not you. You've watched it twice or or three times by now, right? Right. So here we go. Spoilers, spoilers, in case you still haven't seen it. If that's the case, why are you even here? Um, The Deaths, T-Dog. Fan favorite. I was sad to see him go, quite honestly, because, uh, yeah, I know he didn't do much last season, but he was still fun. You know, he was—he was, he looked, and Arnie Singleton, who plays on the actor, he, lo- he looks like somebody who you could, you know, go get a pizza or something with, and you'd, you'd, you'd enjoy hanging around with him. It was, it, he, I, I liked the way he went out, because he went out like a hero. He sacrificed himself so Carol could get away, and, you know, that's the end of T-Dog. So, rest in peace, T-Dog. The other one, Lori. This one... A lot of us it was kind of like the Darth Vader death in Return of the Jedi. The entire, you know, through through A New Hope and Empire, you're hoping that Luke beats him, especially as, except when we got that twist, you know, the greatest twist in movie history. No, I am your father. But he's he's still the villain. He's you still wanted him to win. And when he finally, and Darth Vader finally died in Return of the Jedi, we all cried because we knew it was Anakin Skywalker. It was kind of the same thing here with Lori. All last year, last season, all of you wanted her to die because she was annoying and she's not doing anything. Now you kind of, she might kind of made up for it. Plus, she's with child. She's expecting the, the the child, and they kill her off. You get the child, but they kill her off. And that scene right there with Carl Chandler Riggs and with uh, Sarah Callies who plays Lori, if that didn't make you tear up a little or even get a little bit emotional, if you didn't get a lump in your throat. He might be a walker. You might want to check if you have a pulse or not, because because you know it, it. It I watched. You know how they play the episodes twice. I I watched them twice. Both times it punched this the same. My friend, my buddy Chris Hardwick, he does Talking Dead afterwards. If you those of you, those of you guys who watched it, he was crying during the Talking Dead. Irony Singleton was a special guest who played uh, T Dog. He was crying during it. Um, Gail Ann Heard, one of the producers, she was on. She looked emotional. She didn't, she held it in. She did a pretty good job holding it. But 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 uh, Irony Singleton and, and Chris, they were crying. It was there was that much of an emotional episode. So again, like I said, this is why the AMC is The Walking Dead. This is why it's the top rated show in television. It's the best written show. It's the best acted show. Oh, like I was saying that point, Carl and Lori there that that death scene, that has got to be the most heartbreaking scene i've seen on television i i think i can say ever really so wow hats off really to everybody nicotero and everybody over there the, uh, the producers and writers especially and the actors of course can't wait to see what happens now um if you guys read the comic book we're expecting some gruesome things especially over at uh woodbury with the governor and michonne so we're there every sunday for that so that's what's going on tv um, what else do we got to take care? Oh, one more thing that we have to take care of here for the show for you guys. Joel and Jay, like I said, they're not on the show now. They're here. Then you're just not going to step on the microphones now because we're cleaning out our clo- our prize closet. And there's a lot of extra things that we have in there over from, you know, from, from January all the way to now, now that it's the end of the year. And a lot of it is free con swag that we get, you know, free posters, free, you know, movie things thingamajiggies that, that they give out like uh, a couple years ago we got the inception the 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 spin top thing what is it called again? the the totem we got some of those that's right here on our console as a matter of fact and you know i don't let anybody touch it of course you're not supposed to uh but we have those kind of things we have posters we have avengers posters the amazing spider-man poster prometheus 3d poster why am i telling you this you want them you do oh pretty easy you got to do a little bit of work but you know it takes like literally about two nanoseconds on the homepage where you are right now listening to the show scroll down a little two things you can't miss first big old picture of yaya han yaya han she's been on the show a few times you you guys know who she is she's arguably one of the best cosplayers out there she makes all her costumes i mean literally makes every single piece she doesn't buy anything she buys the materials but she sews everything together herself 
she she sells some of the stuff. You can go to yayahan.com and you can try to do an awesome costume like her, but she's got a gift. You know, like like the, that movie. I forget what it was with Robert De Niro. You got a gift. You got a gift. So, um, she's doing a, a 2013 cosplay calendar, which you know it's 12 months of her in costume. You can get a pre-order. You can pre-order it or order it actually now, and you'll get it in time for the new year. How about a free one? How about not just a free one, an autographed free one? You want an autographed Yaya Han 2013 cosplay calendar? All you got to do is sign up to our second new thing, the newsletter. That's coming in 2013. I'm going to send you guys one, whoever signs up. I'm going to send you one in December because we're going to take a a, a break uh, in December over the holidays, and then we'll come back. So I'll just send you a, you know, happy holidays. Here's what's coming up on the show kind of thing, and here's when we're coming back. And then it'll start regularly in 2013. It's not going to be a weekly thing. It'll be like twice a month, but it'll be basically everything that's going on in the show. You'll know there. You'll get on the newsletters, get upcoming guests, links to them, special events, WonderCon, contests, Comic-Con, you know, things we're giving out, appearances that we're going to do. Anything that you want to know about the Geek Speak show will be on this newsletter. So sign up for that. And November 21st and 28th also, by the way. We're going to do best of shows, which are just uh, replays of um, interv- good interviews from uh, earlier this year. Uh, there will be some new things in those shows. On the 28th, I'm going to announce, I'm going to pick and announce two winners, two winners, two winners randomly. And those two, both of you will get an autographed Yaya Han poster. So if you want a chance at that, at one of those autographed Yaya Han cosplay post, uh, calendars, not posters, calendars, Sign up for the newsletter. I'll pick you randomly, and I'll announce you on the 28th best of show. Everybody else, if you don't get a calendar, that's okay because, we, like I said, we're cleaning out the prize closet. We got a bunch of stuff in there, posters, movie stuff, uh, souvenirs from the Winchester Mystery House, um, Spider-Man things, and a lot of cool stuff. I'm not going to name it all on, on the air because it's a big old list, and I'd, we'd be here longer than we are right now. But if 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 I pick you randomly, I'm going to contact you. I'll send you pictures and you can pick, hey, I want this or I want that. And we'll send it off to you. You know, it is begun from Halloween to the season of giving. So we'll give you some of the stuff that we're not going to need because, you know, we have our posters hanging up here in the studio. But the rest we're going to share with you guys. And so all you got to do for everything, sign up to the newsletter, uh, put your email in there. It takes, like I said, two, three nanoseconds and boom, you're in, you're registered. And we'll pick the winners for the cosplay calendar the autograph cosplay calendar on the 28th show you'll be announced on there then you'll get it by december something in time for the new year in other words so that's what's going on so before anything else like i said we're gonna talk comics in just a little bit but before we do we got to go back to star wars again it's too big of an announcement to not talk about it just brush over it i was gonna talk to you guys exactly what this announcement means but instead of doing all that we're going to hear now from Walt Disney Company CEO Bob Iger, here he is. Today, I am proud to announce the Walt Disney Company is acquiring Lucasfilm, the global entertainment company founded by George Lucas and the home of the legendary Star Wars franchise. In addition to getting the rights to one of the greatest family franchises and epic stories of all time, Disney is also acquiring all of Lucasfilm's operating businesses, including Industrial Light and Magic, and Skywalker Sound. George Lucas is a true visionary and an innovative epic storyteller who has defined modern filmmaking with unforgettable characters and amazing stories. The Star Wars universe now has more than 17,000 characters inhabiting several thousand planets and spanning 20,000 years. And this gives Disney infinite inspiration and opportunities to continue the epic Star Wars saga. Fans can expect a new feature film, Star Wars Episode 7, in theaters worldwide in 2015. And there will be more feature films, as well as consumer products, television projects, games, and theme park attractions. We're thrilled that George has entrusted the future of his extraordinary legacy to the Walt Disney Company and recognize what an honor it is. We truly understand the responsibility that comes with being the caretakers of such iconic characters that are beloved by hundreds of millions all over the world. Disney has a unique ability to grow strong brands and expand fantastic creative content, 
as we've proven with our successful acquisitions of both Pixar and Marvel, and the addition of Lucasfilm will further our growth strategy and create even more opportunity for Disney to drive significant long-term value for our shareholders. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody else, you know, this doesn't apply to you unless you're a CEO, and if so, then you know what I'm talking about. But yes, it is all about the money because that's what makes this country go around. I mean, the lack of it now is kind of not making it go around, but that's exactly what I mean. So this is, again, going back to what I said. I'm not worried about this because I know Disney cares about the fans. They really do. Most of you may be sawing and, uh, you know, you sound like you have a leak, an air leak somewhere, but they really do. Again, look what they did with Marvel and the culmination of it, the Avengers this year. Iron Man 3 next year kicks off Marvel Movie Universe Phase 2. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm not worried at all about the future of Star Wars. Now, there's one guy responsible for all of this. Not mess, but all of this. You know who that is? The beard. Not Spielberg, the other beard. Okay, the flannel one. We'll call him that. Here's George Lucas on why Disney. I've been a big fan of Disney all my life. Uh, you know, from when I was born. Uh, first day at Disneyland. Uh Love Disney movies. Uh, got very involved with Disney um, in the uh, 80s and uh, working in the parks. Uh, and I've always had a fondness for Disney. Um, at the same time, uh, as I've gone through my career, I realized at some point I needed to retire and I wanted to go on and do other things, uh, things in philanthropy and doing more experimental kind of films, but I couldn't really dragged my company into that, and uh, I felt it was time for me to uh, start thinking about retiring, and I've been doing that for the last uh, four years, uh, and one of the most important uh, shifts that I had was I found Kathy Kennedy, who I'd been working with for 40 years, uh, and asked her if she wanted to come and be a co-chairman with me and get ready to take over the company and take over the franchise and do everything, and once that piece was in place, I knew then I could step away and actually retire. Uh, The final block in that was to um, find a good solid home for the company. And um, the first place I thought was uh, Disney. Um, They're large enough and the match of what our two companies are is just perfect because we're like a mini Disney. We have the same kind of operations, we do the same kind of thing. And I've worked with Disney over the years and I know how they operate. So it was a perfect match of two companies that are uh, constructed similarly, do the same kind of product. And um, I think uh, we'll, you know, it'll give me a chance to go off and explore my own interests at the same time, feel completely confident that Disney, uh, you know, will take good care of the franchise I've built. And um, at the same time, you know, for me, I look at it as, uh, uh, I'm investing in Disney because that's my retirement fund. All right, again, with the monies. And, you know, those of you who are going to start, like I said, hating, don't. Because right the next day, it was reported George Lucas donated more than half of that $4.5 billion to education. So there. Great for him. So, again, there, there you go. We heard from both uh, Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger and George Lucas on why they, they acquired Lucasfilm, why George Lucas chose Disney. And then uh, later on in the show, we're going to hear from George Lucas about the biggest question on all of our minds. What about Star Wars? What happened to Star Wars now? We know Episode 7 is coming. 8 and 9 is coming also. Kathleen Kennedy's behind us, so I'm not worried about that either. Rick McCallum, by the way, none of us really knew was made public also after the announcement. Apparently, Rick McCallum retired from Lucasfilm. He wasn't forced out. It was amicable. So he's retired. He won't be producing 7, 8, and 9. It'll be Kathleen Kennedy. But that's okay because Kathleen Kennedy has been George's partner. He's known her for, what do you say, 40 years? My, my lifetime, almost 40 years. And Kathleen Kennedy has also worked with another guy on movies like E.T., Raiders of the Lost Ark. Do I really need to go on? So in good hands, definitely for sure. Disney, Kathleen Kennedy, and the Star Wars 
future movies and the future of Star Wars really is in good hands. So let's talk comic books and I'm sure we're going to talk about it, Star Wars comic books in there also because in all this excitement about movies, everybody seems to have forgotten that, hey, Dark Horse Comics has the Star Wars license now. Somebody else owns the license now and that somebody also has a comic book company. So what's going to happen to Dark Horse Comics and Star Wars? We don't know. So we'll we'll talk about comics. Scott tipped in front of the show. is going to come on in just a few minutes. Uh, Jay Gibbs is not going to be on. So I'll jump in real quick and do the comics commentary. Uh, here's, again, a reminder on how you guys can get some of our free swag from cons, uh, posters, movie stuff. And if you're lucky, two of you will get an autographed Yaya Han 2013 cosplay calendar for signing up in the newsletter. So here's how to get that. The Geek Speak Show will be back in a moment. Sign up for the Geek Speak Show newsletter coming in 2013. Get info on upcoming guests and special events. Be the first to learn about show giveaways and other exclusive content. Sign up now and win one of two Yaya Han 2013 cosplay calendars autographed by Yaya Han. Two random winners will be picked and announced on November 28th. Or you can win some extra swag. The Avengers posters, the Amazing Spider-Man poster, Prometheus 3D poster, and Whalen Industries Company ID cards, souvenirs from the Winchester Mystery House, and more. Sign up now on the homepage at thegeekspeakshow.com. Hey, this is Todd McFarlane, I'm creator of Spawn, and one of the original founders of Image Comics, and you're listening to Geek Speak Show. Thanks for coming. You are listening to the Geek Speak Show. I'm Henry, so let's talk comics for just a little bit. We're going to do the comics commentary in just a little bit. And we're going to have Mark Arnold doing the stories behind the stories. Stay tuned for that. But right now, friend of the show, Scott Titsum, returns to the Geek Speak Show. Hey, Scott, welcome back. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for coming on. And a big announcement, but before we get to that one, uh, the last time you were on, you mentioned BlastoffComics.com. So for those who may have missed that interview or who don't may not know about Blastoff Comics, tell us about Blastoff Comics, the website. Well, Blast of Comics, the website, is a site I started about a year ago with my partner, Jed Meyer, a uh, retailer with lots of experience. And uh, the idea with Blast of this website was to create a site that focuses on the history of comics while at the same time creating a place to buy some really, really hard to find, really exciting vintage books. And we specialized in uh, acquiring collections from, uh, from like notables in the industry. We, we were the ones who acquired Mark Wade's collection and helped him sell his to fund his digital initiative for comics. We actually uh, saw a lot of Harlan Ellison's collection come through our doors and were sold. And then we also made some headlines this year for helping out uh, Superboy creator Carl Kessel, who sold his collection in order to pay for the uh, adoption fees and hospital bills for his infant son. And so what we've been doing this year is is, uh, using the site to talk about vintage comics, talk about the history of comics, what we love about them, and at the same time, provide a place to actually um, uh, buy these in places that, you know, since there are a lot of places that really have good vintage books across the country. Yeah, so definitely a place to go if you want some vintage comics. But now, in North Hollywood, you're going to have literally a place to go because you're deciding to make it a retail store, a brick and mortar store. So when and why did you decide to go from blastoffcomics.com to Blastoff Comics the store, the comic shop? Well, yeah, it was very exciting. We, uh, we're, we're opening our doors in North Hollywood this Saturday. Um, and basically the idea was that we just want to take everything that people have been liking about the website and create a retail environment that kind of simulates that same feeling, a, a, a store with a sense of history, a store that's about – that has respect for comics as an art form. And so what we have is, I mean, we have a, a lot of, of, again, amazing vintage books, stuff from the Wade collection, stuff from the Ellison collection, stuff from the Kessel collection. And so plenty of new comics, plenty of new current trades and hardcovers, but also a focus on art. We have, a lot, we have some amazing animation art, some amazing comic book art in the store. And we just want to take what people seem to really enjoy about the website and, and move it over to a retail environment. Yeah, grand open, comic shop grand openings are always a pretty fun affair. We've had a few here in the San Francisco Bay Area where we are. Unfortunately, on the show, we've also had some stores close their doors permanently. Now, in this economic climate that we're in, honestly, how scary is it, if at all, to open a, a brand new comic book shop? 
Well, I mean, if I didn't think it was a it was a uh, a good idea, I wouldn't be doing it. I mean, I I, I mean, I'm very confident in, and not only because we're at the, we're we're right in the middle of the North Hollywood Arts District, which is this thriving area of of L.A., smack in the middle of all kinds of amazing theaters, some of the best restaurants in Los Angeles, and it's just a great place that really needs a bookstore. Yeah, so you'll and definitely so get I, a lot of traffic for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. And I and 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 with my partner Judd Myers uh, behind the counter, I have no worries at all that we're going to be doing quite well. Yeah. So, so in your opinion, what what's going to set Blast off apart from other comic book shops in the area? Um, I think it's. I mean, again, it uh, we we're trying to. Uh, we're, we're, the best advice I ever got about writing was to write the kind of stories you want want to read. And I'm trying to, to kind of carry that over to this, where we're trying to create the, the kind of comic shop we've always wanted to go to. Uh, a comic shop that's focusing on comics as an art form, as literature, on stories. A, a place where people can come in and say, you know, I love comics, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to read. And just help us, uh, to, to, to help, help people come in and find out what they like in all their other forms of art and literature and get them comics that fit in that, in that thing. It's all about service. Yeah, you may have gotten emails like this. I know I'm probably going to get a few. There's going to be a few people who are going to ask, well, if, if I can just go to blastoffcomics.com, why should I go to the store? So why should they? Well, I think, especially with, with comics fans, the experience of going to your local comic book store is something that, that people really enjoy. And, I mean, I mean, we try to have our, our website be as, as enjoyable as possible, but I know I, I just I enjoy going to the comic shop every week. And I think that there's something entrenched in the minds of comic fans that you, you need to go to the shop. <laughs> and so I think even when people have – this is the same argument that people make about, about digital comics versus printed comics. I think there's a place for digital. I think uh, it, it's going to be something that becomes more and more prevalent. But people love that comic in their hands, and people love strolling into the comic shop and browsing. Yeah, I mean, it's part of all our, all our listeners and myself included. As a matter of fact, I'm already packed. And as soon as we're done here, I'm heading off to my local comic book shop. Exactly. New Comics Wednesday. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, so, we're talking again to the writer, Scott Tipton, now also Blast Off Comics co-founder and chief creative officer. Blast Off Comics, the store, the grand opening is this Saturday, November 10th, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., located at 5118 Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood. You can go to blastoffcomics.com. All the info is on there. So, tell us what's going to be happening at the grand opening. Uh, well, we've got um, we've got some some pretty uh, some pretty exciting people coming over to 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 meet the fans and sign some books. Mark Wade's coming in, you know. Uh, the Mark Wade's run Daredevil this year has just been like, spectacular, the yeah. most fun and the most exciting the book's been in years. And I, I I've I've loved most of what's happened with Daredevil in the last in the last decade. But Mark's run has just been like, uh, just spectacular. So Mark's coming in. Jim um, Jim Cruder is coming in of of Earth X and Justice Fame. I I loved his Justice book with Alex Ross. And he's got a new book of his that he'll be premiering at the store. And Greg Hurwitz, who is currently doing um, Batman the Dark Knight for DC and recently published an amazing Penguin graphic novel, will also be, will be signing. And I might be there to, to scribble a name on some Star Trek Doctor Who comics as well. <laughs> yeah, so if you have some, because the Assimilation Squared run is obviously doing phenomenally well, bring, bring them by and well, you'll, you'll sign those, of course. I think, I think we might have some in the store. Well, there you go. If you don't have them, get them there. <laughs> is is your brother David? Is he going to be there also, is, or no? Um, David will be trying to make it, but he he is not scheduled to appear. But I suspect if you look around <laughs> the place, you might find it. Okay. So so speaking of assimilation squared, I know we're, we're coming to to the end of it. It's a, it's an eight issue uh, run. Seven and eight are coming up pretty soon. Tease what you can about uh, what's coming up towards the end. Um, what's I mean? It's it's the big it's the big finale. We we start to see. We, we're going to start to see kind of uh, what the, the 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 main gambit has been all along. We'll be seeing some, you know, we'll be seeing some possibly some betrayals, possibly some switching of sides. Um, it's it's all the marbles are coming up, and it's gonna, it's going to be great stuff. I'm looking at the pages now, and they're coming in from Gordon Purcell and J.K. Woodward, and it's just fantastic stuff. That's what you call a tease. So it's coming coming pretty soon. Simulation Squared from David and Scott Titton. Scott, thanks a lot. Wish you nothing but success with the store. Again, the store opens this Saturday, November 10th, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the North Hollywood area. Mark Wade will be there. Greg Hurwitz will be there. Jim Krieger will be there. Scott Titton will be there. David, maybe, maybe not. Like you said, not scheduled to appear, but, you know, 
he'll maybe he'll be the support. You. You, you just may have to look for him. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you. good good luck with everything. You're you're welcome on the show anytime. The big give any announcements or anything you want to promote, you're welcome back on here, and we will talk to you later. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, man. Comics commentary with Jay Gibbs on the Geek Speak Show. Well, no, Jay Gibbs this week. It's going to be me, and it's going to be a short and sweet comics commentary this week. So here we go. First of all, Comic Con International Director of Marketing and Public Relations and friend of the show, David Glanzer confirms that they have extended the contract with the city of San Diego for one more year past the initial 2015 ending date. Basically, what that means is San Diego Comic Con will be San Diego Comic Con. It's going to stay. It's going to stay in San Diego at least through the 2016 year. Expect an announcement on the future of WonderCon pretty soon. The Amazing Spider-Man arrived on Blu-ray this week, as did some news concerning the sequel. First, Mark Webb has officially signed on to direct The Amazing Spider-Man 2, or whatever it's going to end up being called, and it will be filmed in 3D. Mark Webb says he's thought about filming in IMAX 3D, but no decision has been made on that yet. He confirmed that the villain will be Electro, and that he's talking to Jamie Foxx about a plane Electro. Yeah, really. Universal Pictures has confirmed that their adaptation of IDW's Lock and Key is indeed a trilogy and that Roberto Orki and Alex Kurtzman are writing it. Orki and Kurtzman, if you remember, were producers on the unaired Lock and Key TV pilot. Now, you can file this one as a rumor, although it comes from a pretty credible source, and that's all I'm going to say. Joss Whedon's Shield TV series could begin shooting in January, this coming January, to make ABC Television's 2013 list of new shows. Clark Gregg has already been confirmed to be playing Agent Phil Coulson, and Ming-Na Wen has been cast as Agent Melinda May, who is described as an ace pilot and weapons expert. And finally, the Disney Star Wars deal has brought up many questions. Who's going to direct? Who's going to star? What's the story? Another question is what will happen with Star Wars comics? Since 1991, the Star Wars license has belonged to Dark Horse Comics, and they've done a pretty good job with the stories. But after the announcement last week, capital T, capital A, Dark Horse president and founder Mike Richardson said, Dark Horse and Lucasfilm have a strong partnership which spans over 20 years, and it's produced multiple characters and storylines which are now part of the Star Wars lore. Star Wars will be with us for the near future. Obviously, this deal changes the landscape, so we'll all have to see what it means for the future. Well, what it could mean is a couple of things. The most obvious is Star Wars goes back to Marvel Comics, and they're owned by Disney also. The other is that the license stays with Dark Horse and Disney just collects a licensing fee. We'll all know soon enough what the future of Star Wars comics will be under Disney. So there you go, a short and sweet comics commentary. Jay Gibbs will be back next week and do the regular comics commentary. Now let me turn it over to Mark Arnold for his stories behind the stories with an exclusive interview with writer Trina Robbins. The stories behind the stories with Mark Arnold exclusively on The Geek Speak Show. Hi, this is Mark Arnold from the Stories Behind the Stories, and today's guest we have is the infamous Trina Robbins. Uh, she was one of the pioneers of the underground comics movement, and is also an advocate for women in comics, and she was the co-creator of Vampirella, and has worked on various mainstream comics over the years like Misty and Wonder Woman. Uh, most recently, she's been working on comic book adventures of Honey West, and is the co-author of the book Women in the Comics, and co-founder of Friends of Lulu. That's a lot of stuff going on, so <laughs> welcome, Trina, to the show. And, and thank you, but I have to make some corrections here, first uh -oh. of all. Why, uh -oh. why am I infamous? <laughs> <laughs> You're not just famous. Everybody knows who you are, Trina. <laughs> yeah, infamous. Infamous means you've done something absolutely horrific. Uh oh, okay. I apologize for that. <laughs> look up, please look up infamous in the dictionary. Oh, okay. I said that wrong. I, it I thought that was that. being a good thing, you know. No, well, it, okay. it could be. I mean, if you're shocking and all I that. Iconic. Stuff. <laughs> yes. I iconic is, thank you. Let's do iconic. iconic. Do. Let's do iconic. Uh, okay. Yes. And, and, and to, to list as the first of my, co my, my accomplishments, to list designing Vampirella's costume, I really have to. Please, I have to make exception to that. I mean, I did that so many years ago, and all I did was design her costume. That's all I did. And I've done so much more, <laughs> so much more through the years. Well, hopefully I wish we... you wouldn't have that as the first accomplishment. <laughs> 
No, actually, I said you're a pioneer in the underground comics movement first, but uh, yeah, uh, I just kind of went chronologically through the years. So um, I know more recently, um, and we can jump to that. Uh, yeah. Please. Yes. Uh, so I, I will list off all the books, and if I get all the books, uh, if I miss some, let me know. But yeah, so here's the books that I know that you've written, and I find them all very excellent. Is Women in the Comics, A Century First of Women. First it's called Women and the Comics. Oh, Women and the Mark, Comics. Do your homework. Oh, fool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I get the other ones right here. A Century of Women Cartoonists, uh, The Great Women Superheroes, uh, From Girls to Girls, A History of Women's Comics from Teens to Zines, and The Great Women Cartoonists. I th- think that's about everything, but if I'm missing one, let me know. No, that, that's not bad. I'm, I'm now working currently, in fact, right on the screen, right in front of me are the captions for the illustrations to my final and... And absolutely comprehensive history of women cartoonists, which at this point I have so much more information and far too many pictures, and it's just, this is really going to be the one. This is going to be the absolute perfect book, and I'm doing it for Fantagraphics, who, who produces great books, and I'm really happy with them. They did my Nell Brinkley book. Oh, you never mentioned the Nell Brinkley book Uh-oh. <laughs> or the Tarpe Mills Miss Fury book? Well, tell us about them, please. Okay, well, Nell Brinkley, also published by um, Fantagraphics, is about... Nell Brinkley was a superstar woman cartoonist in the early 20th century. A super, super, superstar. And she did gorgeous work, but uh, she's been forgotten. And uh, it's always interesting to me that... Um, uh, Charles Dana Gibson. She was actually considered in her day to have superseded him because he was a little before her. But you can look up Gibson Girl in the dictionary, and yet there's nothing for Brinkley Girls, which is what they called the women that she drew. And it's really hard for me not to think, well, gee whiz, what could be the reason? She's a woman, he's a guy. Could that possibly be the reason? <laughs> but at any rate, she was absolutely wonderful, and I've collected her work, and that's published by Fantagraphics. Wow. And as for Miss Fury, that's IDW, um, Tarpe Mills was, Miss Fury, first of all, was really the first major costumed woman action hero, and she was drawn by a woman. She actually beat out Wonder Woman by six months. Wow, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> it was a newspaper strip, and Tarpey Mills is such an interesting... It isn't just that the strip is so great and really reads like a film noir adventure, but that Tarpey Mills herself was such an interesting woman because she drew, she drew the heroine, Miss Fury, as actually looking like herself. I mean, she really did look like the heroine, and just in case, you might think it was just a coincidence that she looked like the heroine. Tarpey Mills, the artist, had a white Persian cat named Perryper, and she gave her heroine, Miss Fury, a white Persian cat named Perryper. She put her cat into the strip. <laughs> That's funny. I'll have to check those strips out. Uh, you know, you of course, absolutely I... have to, and you will love them. <laughs> Because I always enjoy reading your books and everything like that, and I did, I wasn't aware of those. That's why I obviously didn't mention them. So. Not only that, but you didn't mention any of the graphic novels I've written. Well, oh, geez, I could go on endlessly about those, That's but right. uh, <laughs> we got a few minutes, so we can talk about them. Uh, let me just give a little plug for you again. This is uh, I'm Mark Arnold talking with Trina Robbins here on the uh, stories behind the stories. So um, yeah, you're 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 affiliated with like basically every publisher, which is really great. Uh, well, most publishers. Yeah. But not the mainstream. <laughs> not the big two. Yeah. So where where can we see you in the near future? Are, uh, any convention appearances? And also, you know, where can we read about you on the website? Do you have a website or anything of like that? Of course I do, and it's very easy to find because it's just trinarobbins.com. Very good. So, you know, how can you forget it? <laughs> oh, unless you forget, unless you go like, what was her name again? <laughs> Trina um, Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and as for conventions, I do know that next August, that's very far in the future, though, <laughs> I'll be at a convention in Phoenix, Arizona, just in time for the hot weather. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure that it'll be air-conditioned. Hopefully. <laughs> um, I also hope, you know, we'll probably be coming 
again next July to Comic Con in San Diego because I usually go every year if there's any reason to go if I have any new books to push, and I think I will because this book will be out. This my my latest book on women cartoonists. By the way, the title is Pretty in Ink. Pretty in Ink. Okay. Yes. Very so good. So you can look for that in 2013. So sounds good. It sounds like you're keeping really busy and very busy and very happy. <laughs> that's that's great. And how's Steve? <laughs> Steve is fine. Steve is fine. Okay. I He's, usually see him course. at different shows. Steve Leoloa is who been, we're talking about. <laughs> that's my partner, and he has been inking Fables, which is a great series. He's been doing it for I don't know ten years now or something, and they keep getting awards. Yeah. Um. I, I do have to tell you that I really don't like superhero comics. In fact, I can't stand superhero <laughs> comics. But the, the Marvel, uh, DC's Vertigo line, Fables, is a non-superhero book, and it's great. It's brilliantly written. The premise is wonderful. The art is great. I love it. As each new issue comes out, you know, and Steve gets advanced copies, I, I grab one and read it immediately. Wow. Very good. All right. Well, I, I'm running out of time, so uh, it was very good to speak with you, Trina. And, it was good to talk uh, to you, Mark, and I hope, I hope you don't mind that I chastised you. <laughs> so you must learn to do your homework. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite all right about it. And I want to thank you again, Trina, for talking with me today. And hopefully, Thank you, Mark. Thank you, too. And hopefully I'll uh, be getting to talk to you again real soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye. You can hear the complete story behind the stories by going to funideas.50webs.com. That's 50webs.com. Funideas.50webs.com. The stories behind the stories. Exclusively on the Geek Speak Show. It's time for the Geek Speak Show Book Club. Uh-huh. Our books are graphic novels. Tell us what your favorites are. Books at thegeekspeakshow.com. So just me today, but I do have a pick for the book club. Very apropos for uh, what happened last week, the announcement I'm talking about, not the uh, the Superstorm or anything. But uh, again, Rachel's not here, Joel, Jay are not here. They'll be back next week when we talk more Star Wars. But because of the Star Wars talk, my book is, yeah, I know I always you know, give Rachel stuff about it, but it's a Star Wars book. Star Wars The New Jedi Order, Vector Prime by R.A. Salvatore. This is a... I know everybody's starting to think about what's the story going to be about, who are the villains, all that stuff. Here are some things to think about. The obvious one, of course, is going to be the Thrawn trilogy. I picked that one earlier this year, so the next obvious one would be right here. This one kicked it off. The Star Wars New Jedi Order book series started with this one, Vector Prime, introduced not only the Jedi Council and the New and the New Jedi Order, but a new villain, and they weren't Sith. It was a Yuuzhan Vong. They... They, you know how how the you know, Yoda has always said there's a there's a disturbance in the Force. There's a distur- <laughs> I haven't done that voice in a while, but uh, there's always a disturbance in the Force. They feel the, a presence in the Force. The Yuuzhan Vong were a unique villain in that they had they were it was a void. They couldn't see them in the quote unquote see them in the Force. It was like they're standing right in front of Leia was the first one to see him, and then Luke later on. And they couldn't see them. They could see them physically in front of them, but they couldn't feel their presence in the Force, which was kind of hard to fight for the Jedi to fight them because most the reason why in the prequel and this is something I, I, I you know again genius writing on George Lucas's part for that at least or you know well I'm not gonna get into that but what I liked about the prequel fights lightsaber fights is that the reason why they're so blazing fast especially with Darth Maul and later on Dooku is because they sense each other's moves, and so they're reacting to that. And you can see that in the way Nick Gillard choreographed the the fights. Here, you can't predict what the Yuuzhan Vong is going to do because you can't feel them in the Force. So that really made it for an interesting new villain that, that, that didn't have Force powers. They were very organic also. They didn't, they didn't use technology. They were very they used organic weapons and ships and everything. They were very, very original and very dangerous for the Jedi um, villain. Uh, big thing that happens in this, spoiler alert if you haven't read New Jedi Order Vector Prime by R.S. Salvatore. Something that never happened in the original movies, one of the major characters dies. Chewbacca. He dies saving Anakin Solo and the, the Millennium Falcon. Um, kind of like T-Dog, I was talking earlier during the TV talk section. 
he went out as a hero, saving Anakin and, and, and the planet, really, that was being destroyed. But he had to be left there. Han was devastated, of course. We, the readers, were also. But that's you know another big event that happens here. So, again, this is called Star Wars The New Jedi Order. Vector Prime, the first book that kicked off the New Jedi Order series. Ari Salvatore, the author, up on our book club section. You can, uh, If you haven't read it, I highly suggest you read that. Give you a little bit more fodder for you guys to think about as we start speculating. Let the speculation begin to 2015 when we get the first trailer uh, about what we may possibly see in episode 7, 8, and 9. So that's my pick for the book club since uh, nobody else is here. We'll call it a book club that's the geek speak show book club tell us what your favorite books or graphic novels are books at thegeekspeakshow.com and that's the show also we're gonna call it a show yeah a little bit shorter than usual um next week like i said rachel hopefully will be back she'll have uh internet again joel and jay and myself i'm gonna go join them in a second we are cleaning out our prize closet again don't forget you can subscribe to the new newsletter, the Geek Speak Show newsletter, coming in 2013 on a regular basis, meaning about twice a month. Not, I'm not going to inundate you with your uh, with a weekly email blast, newsletter blast. You get it about twice a month. It'll tell you who's coming up, guest wise, special events, contests, special things just for subscribers. So subscribe now. And you can get one of our many things that we're giving out. The prize closet, like I said, is being cleaned out by Joel and Jay as we speak. A lot of stuff that we have to give out to you guys. Posters from conventions, from Comic Con, from WonderCon, from Ape, from uh, from Big Wow, from Image Expo. Uh, it's a very cool, actually, Walking Dead item that I won't say what it is from Image Expo that one of you is probably going to end up with. Um, but again, you got to get that. You get, I mean, you can get that by subscribing to the newsletter now, and we'll pick you randomly. I'll also pick you randomly on November 28th, two of you, to win a 2013 Yaya Han cosplay calendar autographed by Yaya Han. So I'll pick you both on the show on the 28th. So start subscribing to the newsletter, and you will get something for it. See? You give to us your email. We'll send you the newsletter. We give to you whatever, you know, probably one of the Yaya Han calendars or one of the posters here. So everybody wins. Halloween is over. Tis the season of giving, so we'll give all this stuff to you. Now, again, next week, reminder, like I said, everybody's going to be here. Rachel, of course, is going to be here. We're going to do a big, big Star Wars show. There's no way we we can ignore it. We can just do it, you know, cover it quickly like I did in the show. But I'm going to let the other shoe drop. Again, not in the bad way. What I mean by that is that I'm going to see what what developments come out of it. Like, like with the Dark Horse thing, I mentioned it during the comics commentary. Let's see what happens with Dark Horse Comics. Do Are they going to keep the license? Or are they going to go over to Marvel again? Or what's going to happen? We don't know yet. Maybe we'll know by next week. Maybe not. But we definitely will know a little bit more than the rumors that have been going on. And I'm sure you guys have read it or heard it. Matthew Vaughn is directing Episode 7. That's why he left X-Men First Class. Maybe, maybe not. Um, pretty reliable source. Steve Frosty Wontraub, one of our, uh, our guys from Collider. He's pretty reliable. I trust him. He's the one that, that that posted that. But again, he made it clear that it's only a rumor. But again, every, everything we get from this, I, I, deja vu. I remember saying this on the internet back because they didn't have a show, but this Geek Speak show back then. But I remember saying this on the internet in internet chat rooms on MySpace. You remember that? <laughs> I remember saying that when episode one was coming was about to come out, and you know we we all thought we knew the stories, and it turned out to be completely different. From what we thought it would be. Yeah, some were a little better than the actual story. But that's a story for another day, for another show. Um, but again, I'm going to say again, everything you hear from this point on, unless it comes from Disney Lucas, consider it a rumor. Um, but we will talk about some stuff with, with some people who are experts in Star Wars. Besides Rachel, we're going to talk to the host of Forcecast, the official podcast of the Force.net. They might know a few things. Not they don't have insider information or anything. And even if, even if any of us do, I'll, t- I'll also tell tell you that right now. If we do, I'm not going to share it with you guys. I, I, I'll, I'm no, I've, you know, I've never liked spoilers, so I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys for episode seven. Um, but the last thing we have to hear again from George Lucas. We heard from Bob Iger and George Lucas earlier as to you know why they did this and why George Lucas picked Disney to to sell uh, Lucasfilm to. But now. The most important question of all, what what happens to Star Wars? I mean, we know about seven, eight, and nine, but you know what else is going to happen to Star Wars now that Disney owns it? So here's George Lucas himself telling us about the future of Star Wars. The future of Star Wars films uh, 
Kathy and I have been working on future Star Wars films. And uh, the main reason I brought Kathy on is rather than quit, I wanted to have it move forward. But I needed somebody I trusted who could take that franchise and make it work the way I intended it to. So once Kathy came on board, we started working with writers and started working uh, on all the processes of doing the films. Um, so we've you know, got a plan for uh, 7, 8, and 9, which are the, is the, the end of the trilogy, and um, other films also. So uh, we have a, you know, a large uh, uh, group of ideas and characters and books and all kinds of things. We could go on making Star Wars for the next 100 years. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> so again, that's what's going to happen to Star Wars. We have 7, 8, and 9 coming. Thanks from George Lucas for letting us know and... Uh, making us feel good about the future of Star Wars. So, like I said, I'm very excited about Star Wars. Again, my 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 uh, love for Star Wars has been reignited again. So, Rachel, I'm right there with you. She'll be back next week. We'll have some Star Wars people. We're definitely going to talk more Star Wars. We, how, how can we not? And we'll talk about the usual stuff. So, as we always say, come on back next week, and we'll speak more geek. And Star Wars, too. The Geek Speak Show will be back next week with a brand new episode. In the meantime, follow them on Twitter at Geek Speak Show 1. That's the number one. Become a fan on Facebook. Subscribe on iTunes. Watch special event coverage and the Geek Speak Video Show on YouTube slash Geek Speak Videos. And listen to past shows in the archive section on thegeekspeakshow.com. A big thank you to the Geek Speak Show's content providers, GeekTyrant.com, Collider.com, Ramascreen.com, and Mightyville.com. The Geek Speak Show.